still do not have a intro. And you may be asking, Patricio, what's happening to your voice? It sounds hoarse. Last time you made a video before summer, it was all sounding quite crisp, quite sharp. What's happened to summer? What's happened to your voice? Well, I tell you what's happening this summer, ladies and gentlemen. Football is coming home. I was at the match yesterday, England, Germany, our arch enemy, got there early, was drinking, dancing, singing, giving it all. Sweet Caroline, oh, oh, oh. Giving it all, Gareth Southgate, you're the one. Giving it all, Harry Maguire, Vodka and Jaeger. Giving it all, 10 German no, no, we weren't we weren't doing the 10 German song. But just before the whole England beating everyone at Wembley, not conceding a goal for 700 minutes, whatever it is right now, I played a few poker tournaments. I won one on Party Poker and I won one on Pokestars. The one on Pokestars has the whole cards revealed and I'm going to go through this tournament now with you guys and show every single hand. Just realised now that I spoiled the whole video that I won. Uh, that's quite bad. But if you guys are watching, you know that I won anyway. Patricio Leonardo, pads on poker, is too arrogant to post a video where he comes fourth or comes seventh. I mean, I'm releasing a poker course, right? I have to pretend I'm better at this game than I actually am. Isn't that what we all do? Isn't that the whole thing? Everyone who has a course, they all say they're better at poker than they actually are, myself included. So if I'm uploading a video, you know that I've won anyway. There's so many where I've come seventh and thirteenth and punted and bubbled and Pads 1161 in brackets 5, getting the max re entries more than probably anyone in the world this year on Poker Stars. But when we win, we have to sing a song about it. We have to we have to dance about it. We have to upload a video about it. Like it's a bit ridiculous, really. My next video I'm gonna upload is gonna be me finishing six. I promise, I promise that. But let's jump into it anyway. This is me playing uh last Sunday, which I guess is like the 27th of June. And yeah, looking forward for you guys to hopefully watch it. I think it's a very interesting final table. Uh, loads of action going on, loads of drama, loads of big pots. I really do hope that you enjoy it. And in two seconds, you're going to see the drop down menu. No. Sweet Caroline. Oh, oh, oh. That might be my new intro. Guys, have we, have we finally found an intro? Sweet Caroline, is that our new intro? We just gave it the oh, oh, oh. I think that's the one. I think I may have finally found an intro I'm happy with. If you if you like Sweet Caroline being my intro, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm going to go through this uh, lineup now. Let's see who we've got in the mixer here. So starting with myself, chip leader. Uh, very luckily accumulated these chips throughout this tournament. On my left, I have Internet930, a guy who has an avatar of himself wearing headphones, looking down at his cards. I mean, this is not him, you know, in Ibiza. It's not him in Wembley. He's giving it the oh, oh, oh. It's him at the table taking himself serious. So this guy here, serious customer. He's going to be taking this tournament serious. Next one here, we have What is Love? Baby, I will hurt you. If you've seen my Instagram, you know that I'm a big, big fan of this avatar. Great player. Very underrated player. Lucan Dan, who is a very aggressive, very aggressive guy. Um, Martin Jakobsen, the ex-world champion, one of the greatest players in the world. He is the owner of Black Sheep Coffee. They provide some of the best coffee in London. Shout out to them. Uh, Tomati, Francisco Benitez, one of the biggest winners in the world. Great player. Um, very aggressive. He's going to be doing some crazy stuff. Danos. Danos is very good player. Very underrated, I would say. Probably... Probably considered um, by a lot of people who don't like know know him because he doesn't play like live pokers, just like a another reg. But he's very good, I think. Um, someone I have a lot of respect for. Botter and poker. He is a high stakes Brazilian player. I think he was number one in the world last year. Shibe Free, I believe, is a recreational who plays for fun and has a good time. So let's get into it. I'm gonna speed this up a bit too slow for my liking. Okay, so Shiba should fold, he raises, he limps, he limps, internet limps behind, and what is love has 12 big blinds and ace king, kind of an interesting spot actually, um, it's a kind of spot where internet's money is probably dead, let's say he's limping a good hand, even like king jack off suit, he's probably not going to call a 12 big blind shove, so it might be a spot where you could potentially shove 
30, 40, 50% of hands. Very, very good spot. This is going to be lots of weak marginal hands. And just internet, if he has, you know, king 10 suited, probably going to raise. And even if he has king 10 suited, probably isn't going to call a shove anyway. So with a lot of dead money in here, you can pick up 40% of your stack. Could be a way to be very aggressive. What is love goes for a tricky 4x. Gets it through. I should raise ace three here. If not, I'll be disappointed. This guy shoves on me. You hate to see it. This guy raises now. So he limped one hand. Now he's raising. We can already make some assumptions about how he plays different parts of his range. Martin's going to call. Check 9-10. Seems an easy, easy check by Martin, of course. Ace King could start bluffing. You could make somebody fold a hand like you know, 9-5 suited. You know, 10-5 suited. You can make them fold a hand with equity like you know, eight, eight, four, like ace, eight, these hands are probably gonna have to fold. Um, but checking's also reasonable. You, you don't really get check shoved on. Our position's quite incentivized to fast play, you know, just to check, just say, okay, I'm gonna go with it. So checking back seems reasonable. And then they check it down, seems reasonable too. I raise ace two, because I'm a crazy guy. I play too loose. I've got too much ego, I'm too arrogant, I can't let one go. Uh, what is love puts me in my place. I hate to see it. Um, nines opens, sevens should fold. Not a great hand. You have one, two, three, four, five ranges against you. When you get called, he never calls with pocket sixes. Um, he's probably not folding ace queen against this. He's probably not folding ace jack suited against this. Um, he's not really incentivized to open too loose because you're short, he's short, you know, just not that incentivized to be that, that crazy here. Um, so yeah, I think fold sevens here would be pretty reasonable. Good fold. That's why he's a very good player. I should fold eight, six. I do. It's nice. Ace two is a better hand than eight, six when these guys have shove stacks, I think. King, queen suited has a very easy flat call here. He doesn't want to free bet and then call a shove because he's going to be against what is love probably open shoves, ace, queen, and ace, king. So when you free bet and get all in against a four bet, you're always against, you're always against jacks, queens, kings, and aces. So if you do want to free bet call here, it's better to free bet call with maybe, you know, like ace two suited, ace five suited, and blocking a lot of race folds. And then you get it in against, you know, like some pairs where you have 30% against. With King Queen, you get it in against jacks like this, but you're either gonna get it in get it in dead against aces, dead against kings, pretty dead against queens, and you flip against jacks. So King Queen really wants to just flat call here. And if you free bet, you're gonna probably have to fold because of the range you're against. He free bets. And if you do want to fold against a four bet, you'd rather choose a bad hand. You're on the button, right? You'd rather choose maybe a seven off, ace nine off, you know, king eight suited, king jack off, king queen suited just has a lot of playability post flop. But he free bet calls because it's Sunday, it's, you know, 4 a.m. Copper America is on. Wait there, wait there, give, give me one second. Copper America, let me just pull up Copper America here. All right, so I've got BBC website. We're going to look for fixtures on Sunday. Sunday the 27th, Copper America. Okay, so he's from Uruguay. So let's see what Uruguay's results were here. All right, Uruguay went playing. What about Monday? No Uruguay. Saturday, is he tilted from Saturday still? Not Saturday. Let's see what Uruguay's up to. Okay, give me one more second, guys. Okay, guys, I found it. I found it. So Uruguay's last fixtures. They drew with Chile 1-1. They got beat of Argentina 1-0. They drew with Venezuela 0-0. They drew with Paraguay 0-0. They got beat of Brazil 2-0. So their last five fixtures are very poor. I know Francisco, very good good player, huge football fan though. So sometimes if he free bets you on the button, sometimes what you need to do is go BBC and check Uruguay's previous results because sometimes King Queen just gets free bet called in those situations. And there's some external factors, I believe. Uh, Ace 10, I raise, get called. I min bet. So when I min bet, he probably shouldn't have a jack that's going to go all in. Shouldn't have much deuce X. He's going to just have a lot of you know, ace five of diamonds, king seven of clubs, king ten of hearts, just loads of hands. You'd expect nine ten to just shove. You could have some hands like queen nine, you could have a hand like eight seven. But when we get here with the SPR, he's probably not very strong. We want to just go with our hand. Even if we get called, not in too bad shape here. So I think shove is quite good. Okay. 
we lose this time. And now we're going downhill. I, advert. Okay. We'll let the advert roll. And then this is where I get loads of comments. Oh, Patricio, get ad blocker. You know, I'm a content creator. How can I live with myself if I'm paying to not have adverts? I make a living for you guys watching adverts on my videos. That's how that's how I pay for the England shirt. That's how I pay for the hundred hats I have. That's all, that's the whole game. I need you guys to watch the adverts. I can't. I need to practice what I preach. Um, and I was going to give a story about how everything's going downhill. I've gone from 70 big blinds to 48. Maybe, maybe I would do like a thumbnail on the video, something along the lines of, oh my God, is it all going downhill with my hands over my mouth? Something like that, you know, and, uh, try to tell that story throughout the video. But you guys know I'm not uploading this video unless I win the tournament. So there's no point trying to sell you that, that story. You know how that story ends. Um, Tom T raises spicy guy flats. Spicy flats, Tom T. I think checking here is quite good. Against like Queen Jack off, King Jack off, King 10 off. You really want him to turn some equity and uh, take a gamble by checking back here. If you were, you know, maybe 100 big blends deep, maybe you want to check. Uh, maybe you want to bet more often and start building the pot. But with 17, you can take a risk to check back. Let's say you bet 40k on the turn. There's going to be 150k in the middle. You get to shove the river because he's going to have 160k left. So I like checking here on the flop with aces. If I had jacks, I would definitely bet. It needs some protection. You know, if this guy has like a seven, you don't want him to hit an ace as well. But with aces, you're pretty much locked down in this kind of situation. So I would go with a a check here. Um, but Uruguay won, Bolivia won. I see it. I see it. Um, once we get this far, we're going to be all in. Can you make a good fold? Let's see. That's a good fold. Patron Booker raises, we all fold. Kings raise, we all fold. Queen 10 should raise. I think fours can call here. I think the big blind's gonna see this as a very strong range. This is a very strong range. So he's not gonna shove, you know, like ace 10 or king queen. He's gonna play quite passive. You're getting a good price. It's basically a min raise. Uh, your hand plays quite well. If you have a hand like Jack-10, it can get dangerous. You flop a 10, you flop a Jack, you kind of have to go with it a little bit. You lose a bit. You have a lot of reverse implied odds. With pocket fours, we either flop big or we flop bad. So it's a kind of hand where you don't mind taking the risk. If you lose 20k, you got 370k. It doesn't change anything. If you can double up and like hit a four against a strong range, which is good, uh, then you're going to go to chip leader, which is massive. So... I would like to take this investment into the pot. He folds. Queen's raise. This is a spicy one, I think. King Jack, free betting. It's a good free bet. You make ace jack fold. You make ace 10 fold. You make king queen fold. So you make a hand with a lot of equity fold. I'm going to fold pocket 10s. He's going to fold 9 10 suited. He's going to fold ace jack suited. He's going to fold ace queen off suit. So you knock a lot of equity out by free betting here for sure. So I like it. If you get called, your hand plays okay. Queens, I think it's quite tough. Like typically here, a lot of people play very passive because they're like, oh, you know, I don't want to get it in against aces and kings. This guy's not getting jacks in. But the thing is, this guy's not free betting like king five suited. He's free betting good hands. Ace jack suited, ace 10 suited, king jack suited, queen jack suited, jack 10 suited. You know, maybe, who knows, like some, some spicy pocket pair potentially. So when his range is not, it's polarized, but the hands in his polarized range could potentially continue. He may call a four bet of King Jack suited thinking you're out of line. So I think four betting in this spot is kind of a, a really good meta for like 2021 poker where no one believes anybody. So I think four betting here is really good. Come on, buddy. Turn Copper America off. Okay, four bets. I like it. Now, King Jack suited, you're thinking, is this guy fucking with me? But if this guy's fucking with me, what is he fucking with me with? He's probably fucking with me with King Queen offsuit, Ace Jack suited, Ace Jack offsuit, Ace Queen. Lots of hand and his value ranges, Queens, Kings, Aces, because Ace King probably gets shoved, right? So against value, you're in a terrible situation. Against bluffs, you're in a terrible situation. So you may think, you gotta let this one go, I think. You got to let this one go, even though you're getting a good price. But he calls, not too sure about that one. 
dicey flop. I think we want to just go all in. We don't want to see a turn card here. We don't want to see an ace. We don't want to see a king. We don't want to see a 10. We don't want to see a 9. We don't want to see a jack. Like, sure, he doesn't have much jacks. Sure, he doesn't have much kings. Sure, he doesn't have much aces. Sure, he doesn't have much nines. But everything is just kind of bad in a little way. Like, if a 10 comes, are we just going all in? If an ace comes, are we just going all in? So I would just go all in, hope to get called by maybe 10s or ace jack suited or, you know, maybe a flush draw, king, queen of spades. We don't have a spade in our hand. So um, I think if actually... We didn't have the queen of clubs. We might be more tempted to go small to maybe get ace queen of clubs to continue, which we do really well against, to get king queen of clubs to continue, which we do really well against. But queens with a club, do the jack salter. Get the, is, I can't even do a triangle with that. How do they... I always thought jack salter doing the triangle like under pressure was like, oh, like it's just nothing. But I can't even do... This is like a Christmas tree. That's not a... Tri have I just got like really fat fingers? How do you do a with it? How do you do a triangle? Is that is that a triangle? I'm not not sure. Let's let's let's, let's move on. Queens twenty five percent. King Jack to call. I would have went all in on the flop, uh, but now the ace comes. It's dicey. It's dicey. I don't know what to do. You know. Often in these videos, it's like, oh well, how don't you know what to do? Like, aren't you supposed to be like a high stakes player? But it's like, yeah, well, you know, if I go and if I go up to a, a girl in a nightclub and she's six foot two and I walk up to her and I have to do that, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. You know, like, I don't know what to do. I've not been, I shouldn't be in that situation. I shouldn't be speaking to the six foot two girl. You know, she, she's, she's two feet taller than me. So I don't know what to do in this situation. So let's just see. I don't know. I'm still I'm still looking around, embarrassed that this girl's too tall for me, so I don't know what to do there. Queen ten's gonna raise ace four all in. Passive. Queen ten obviously gonna see bet flop. Oh this is a flop where we wanna just bet everything. It's almost a little bit face up, I think, when we when we check here that we have a ten. We can get called by worse hands. Get called by Queen Jacks, Queen Nines, a ten, flush draw. Deuce, you know. Turn, I would definitely bet again for value. Can get called by a nine, a ten. Deuce. We let some hands like ace four realize equity, which we don't need to. Even a hand like jack five, which doesn't want to bet the turn, we let that realize equity. So I would just put a bet in for value. And river, we go small. Typically, I don't really do too much small betting in these bots, um, but it's not going to be bad. Okay. I'm getting worried. We're eight minutes in and we're 20 minutes into the video. Am I, am I really going to do a four hour video here? I'm not sure. Jack's open. I need to put this drink down. Let's, let's take this serious. Let's take this serious for once. Come on. Ace to vault. Eight five suited. Raise. Um, yeah, fine. Fine. Put pressure on us. Chip leader. I like it. Jack nine suited. Seems a pretty easy call. Good see bet. Third pot. Could even go smaller. A little trick here is when you play on final tables and the bottom cards are deuce, you can always go less than third pot. The reason being is that I don't defend much deuce X in my defending range. Like I don't have jack two offsuit, nine two offsuit. Let's say the board is jack eight seven. I've got seven six, a seven, king seven, but I don't have seven deuce, I don't have king deuce, I don't have nine deuce. So when the deuce is here, you can almost pretend that the flop is the first two cards. Like just imagine the flop, let's imagine GTO, it comes out, you raise the button, big blind defends, the flop comes jack four nothing. Let's just imagine that was the board. You would always just min bet because I'm just gonna miss so much because there's only two community cards. I'm gonna miss so often on jack four nothing. Uh, so when the deuce is here, it's basically nothing. Um, it adds a little bit as a few draws, you know, five sixes, ace fives, ace threes. But typically, you don't need to go even as big as 30% in an ICM situation here. Um, jack nine against the C-bet. I think that um, check raising would be too ambitious. A little bit too deep stacked for that. We're going to be playing a little bit more passive. Um, 
I think check raising may be king jack with the king of diamonds, ace jack, queen jack, even jack nine with a diamond. Just want to have a little bit more equity. Um, but and jack nine right now, we just want to want to keep it chill. See what happens later. So let's see. I make a slow call for some reason. Turn five, I could potentially lead. I have a lot of, well, you know, I don't. I have. I was going to say I have a lot of six three, ace three, but he has ace three. He may even open six three offsuit and I don't have that. So I think check is good. River seven, in this kind of situation, you don't want to use a pot size bet because I don't have that many perceived bluffs. Um, yeah, I don't have that many perceived bluffs. Maybe my bluffs are something like queen ten of spades. Maybe it's like king of diamonds 10. But it's mostly hands which would probably check raise bluff a lot, like King of Diamonds 10, uh, Queen of Spades, 10 of Diamonds, some some stuff like that. Um, if I have a Jack, I'm not bluffing. If I have a 4, I'm not bluffing. A Deuce is not bluffing. 5, 6 is not bluffing. Ace 3 is not bluffing. 6, 3 suited is not bluffing. Um, so the only thing I could bluff potentially might be Diamonds. A lot of those may check raise on the flop as well, uh, or I've hit a pair as well. Um, the in position, he's going to have a lot of just offsuit hands, like king eight offsuit, king nine offsuit, king ten offsuit, queen ten offsuit, queen nine offsuit, ace nine offsuit, ace eight offsuit, ace six offsuit. So a lot of offsuit combinations, which basically are going to have a very tough time defending the river. So in this kind of spot, I think we want to use around about half pot. If the board was something, let's say, jack five, six, queen, deuce. So like all the draws missed and I'm betting more polarized. I may bet something closer to pot or overbet where I have a lot of bluffs. When I don't have many bluffs to go from here, I probably want to use a half pot size and, and not go too thin. So I don't want to bet a deuce. I don't want to bet a four. I want to start betting probably around like a seven and better. Um, and I want to use around about half pot for that. Also, the reason why I want to bet a seven and better is because he will have some fours, will have some twos, will have some fives. So... I'm betting around about half pot with my bluffs and with my value here. Let's see if I look. Okay, I go for half pot. It's good. He calls, obviously, unlucky for him. And we move on. We go again. Uh, freeze will fold. Yeah, good fold. King 8 suited. Good fold. Ace 10, good raise. Good poker by everyone. Falls should call. 5 free suited should, should call. It's good. Flop 10, 8, 5. Kind of an interesting flop. Um, it's a flop where in positions value betting range wants to put a lot of money in now. So like pocket jacks, pocket queens really wants to put in a bunch of money, especially when you cover them where it's not the end of the world. If you run into a set, um, ace 10 wants to put a lot of money in king 10 wants to put a lot of money in. Um, so it's a spot where you want to bet pretty big. So, you know, anywhere between like it's freeway. So it's a little bit different to normal, but anything, a lot of people here will bet like 20 or 30% pot. Um, but I think you want to probably go bigger than 30% in this kind of spot, even though it's multi-way and it's very dynamic. Jesus Maria. Je Jesus Maria. Let's do Brazil results because they must have been popping off. This guy's excited. Paulinho scored a hat-trick. He must be from his hometown club. This is unbelievable. Overbet. Multi-way, final table, overbet. I love it. I love to see this. You don't see this very often, but I think it's good. I think it's nice. Now, this basically is why I am one of the best players in the world. Like, this is why. I have Jack-10. You should kind of watch this. I have free bet. I'm free betting Jack-10 because I'm going to make this guy fold Ace-10. I'm going to make this guy fold Ace-Jack. I'm going to make this guy fold King-Jack. I'm going to make this guy fold King-10. And look how good I am at this. Watch. Watch this. I play I play Jack 10 suited better than anyone else. That's a fact. I win more with Jack 10 suited. If you go, let me show you another one. Well, let me show you a really important one from my huge win a couple of months ago in the scoop championship of online poker. Make sure that when you're telling friends who aren't, aren't in poker, don't say I won a scoop. Make sure you say the championship of online poker. Make sure you always leave that one in. One second, let me show you this. Where it began. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wrong hand. Here we go. We have to restart the song. DJ. We're there. All right. We'll let it go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
hands. Watch out, wait, watch out. Touching you. Sweet Caroline. Oh, oh, oh. So good, so good, so good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Watch how good I play this river. Watch how good I play this river. I'm putting it in 0 0.25. We're going to really enjoy this one, guys. Wait. Oh. Touching you, sweet Caroline. Ooh. Sorry, I have neighbors. It's 2 a.m., but you love to see it. You love to see it. The best Jack 10 Sudo player in the world this year? Probably me. Probably me. We run good. We run very good with Jack Tensu did. We run very, very good with it. We love to see it. Apologies. Apologies to my neighbors. Apologies for my singing. Apologies to my opponents. I don't know. It's been a hell of a ride. These guys, wait, wait a second. These are really, they're really going for it. So this went raise with nines, three bet kings, four bet ace king, fold nines, nine on the river, Ace on the flop. Internet says FML. You only lost two big blinds. <laughs> what does love tells him? Yes, you are the unlucky one in his hand, bro. <laughs> so good, man. These guys. Uh, eight's going for the min raise. Off 11 big blinds. King 10 defending. Bet by eights. King 10, Colin. Looks fine. Turn check, check. River, King 10 is dying for imposition to check back. Please check Ace 9 suited, he's saying. Gets the check and he loves it. Loves to see it. We're actually 30 minutes in, so I'm going to end this video. I apologize that it's not been the most educational. I apologize it's not been the most serious. Um, it's summer. We're having a good time. England's bringing it home. We're running good with Jack 10 suited. Every time I free bet Jack 10, someone four bets and I always flop the nuts. I have no idea what's going on. Um, but the thing is, you know, like if you're going to have a lucky hand, some people's lucky hand is like 9-5 off or king 5 off or 7-2 suited. And playing the hand, you know, it kind of it's kind of dumb, right? But with me, my favorite hand is my most lucky hand. Everyone's favorite hand is Jack 10 suited. And I run really good with Jack 10. So I'm just so blessed. So, so blessed. I'm going to end this video now. And when I do part two, which is going to be soon, uh, probably in the next couple of days, I'll upload it quickly afterwards so you can fast forward, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I will be a bit more serious. We'll be a bit more technical for part two. Um, so apologies again for my singing and shouting and screaming. I don't know what this microphone... If you People may be deaf now. Maybe I've caused accidents. Maybe I've caused people to go deaf. I'm not sure, but... Um, thanks a lot. Let's see you in the comments. Let's get a bit more active on this YouTube channel again. Uh, see you guys soon and thank you very much.